explain that you introduced Heather Mills to Paul after the show, um, and then we, we know what happened next, as it were. Um, but I'm going to cut straight to the quick, right in the middle of this page. Stories soon emerged that the marriage was in trouble. Do you have that sentence? Yeah, I do, yeah. At one stage, I was played a tape of a message Paul had left for Heather on her mobile phone. Can you remember the circumstances, Mr Morgan? Well, I can't discuss where I was played that tape or who played it, because to do so would be to compromise a source, and I can't do that. Well, I'm not sure about that, Mr Morgan. You can, you can discuss in general terms um, where it was, can't you? Uh, actually, no, I can't. It was a tape of a voicemail message, wasn't it? Well, I'm not going to discuss uh, where I heard it or who played it to me for the reasons I've discussed. I don't think it's right. And in fact, the inquiry has already stated to me, you don't expect me to identify sources. No, but I, I, I think we do expect you to identify what, what is obvious to anyone reading this, um, is that you listen to a tape of a voicemail message. Is that correct? I listened to a tape of a message, yes. But it was a voicemail message, wasn't it? Uh, I believed it was, yes. And then, then you, you deal in more detail here with what you heard. He was heartbreaking. The couple clearly had a tiff. Heather had fled to India, and Paul was pleading with her to come back. And then he even sang something into the answer phone, as you say. So, so you listened to all of that. Did, did you know that that was unethical? Uh, not unethical, no. Why not? It not, doesn't necessarily follow that listening to... Uh, somebody speaking to somebody else is unethical. But on, on the tape of a voicemail message, you didn't think that was unethical? Well, it depends on the circumstances in which you're listening to it. Hmm. But can you tell us something about the circumstances which might lead us to think that it was not unethical? Uh, I'm afraid I can't, no, because I'm not going to do anything that may identify the source. But the source would only be someone who was participating in the same unethical activity as you were. Isn't that true? Well, you're presuming it's unethical. Well, let's give it this way, uh, Mr... Think about it this way, Mr Morgan. Without identifying your source, the only person who would lawfully be able to listen to the message is the lady in question or somebody authorised on her behalf to listen to it. Isn't that right? Uh, possibly. Well? well? Sorry, what do you expect me to say? We'll what? put forward another possibility, if there is one, I think. Well, I mean... <laughs> I can't go into the details of this without compromising a source, and I'm not going to do that. I am perfectly happy to call uh, Lady McCartney to give evidence as to whether she authorised you to listen to her voicemails. If yeah, she well, didn't, we for... if yeah. she didn't, she may say she did, in which case you're not compromising anybody. But if she didn't, then we can proceed on the premise that it's somebody else, can't we? Well, what we know for a fact about Lady Heather Mills McCartney is that in their divorce case, Paul McCartney stated as a fact that she had uh, recorded their conversations and given them to the media. Well, maybe I'll do that then. Can you help us, please, as to approximately when the events described here took place, namely you listening to the, the message? I believe the early part of uh, 2000, 2001, but I can't remember exactly when. So you're, we're, we're clearly in the era when you were the editor of the Daily Mirror, aren't we? I believe so, yes. All right. what, was your source an employee of the Daily Mirror? Uh, I'm not going to go into any details about the source. Well, I don't think you'd be identifying the source if you were to tell us whether or not the employee, whether the individual, pardon me, was an employee of the Daily Mirror. Can you well, not I'm do not that? Start a 
I'm not going to start any trail that leads to the identification of the source. Did you listen to Ulrika Johnson's voice, voicemail messages in relation to Sven Joran Eriksson? No, I did not. Do you recall a lunch at the Daily Mirror hosted by Victor Blank on the 20th of September 2002 when you advised Ulrika Johnson to change her PIN number and you started mimicking her Swedish accent? Do you remember that occasion? No, I don't remember the specifics. I, I think I remember her coming to a lunch. But breaking it down into its two parts, might you have advised her to change her PIN number? I don't recall anything like that. Was uh, a Mr Ben Vervagen, if I pronounce his name correctly, also at the lunch, indeed sitting next to or close to you? Um, he did come to one of the lunches. If you mean the British Telecoms guy? Yes. Yeah, he came to one of the lunches, but I don't know which one. Did you tell him he should tell his customers to be more careful about changing their PIN numbers? I don't recall that. Might you have told him that? Well, since I've been warned, it's possible, yeah. Mm. Can I, can I tell you, or uh, put to you, rather, as generally as I can, the circumstances in which I suggest that you, you did listen to uh, Ulrika Johnson's voicemail, that a competitor of yours had hacked into her voicemail. Obviously, I'm not going to go into the details of that. They were then boasting about it in a pub, and then someone told someone close to you who let it be known to you that this is what happened, and then you decided that we, you, in other words, the mirror, better hack into Ulrika um, Johansson's voicemail as well, and that is precisely what happened. Absolute nonsense, as far as I'm concerned. N none of that is true, is that right? No, I, I, I detail in my book how I was simply told we've had a tip that Ulrika Johnson's having an affair with Sven Goran Eriksson, and I rang... Ulrika's agent, who I knew very well. She spoke to Ulrika and she came back and confirmed it.